Hello everybody, uh, I'm Paul Beckwith and uh, I just want to uh, fill you in in this video on uh, what I'm going to be up to over the next uh, few weeks. So I rented a car today and I'm going on a car trip uh, out to the Great Plains of Canada. I'm hoping to uh, explore places in Saskatchewan and Alberta driving through Ontario to uh, the Manitoba border, then into Manitoba, through Winnipeg, and over to uh, Calgary. So the reason for this trip is uh, multi-purposed. Um, on the way back, I'll be picking up my son and his friend who are tree planting right now in Northern Ontario. They've been there for two months and uh, you know, over that period of time, it's a lot of work and effort to plant trees, but um, they started, you know, at about the thousand trees per day sort of thing. They get paid a minimum and then per tree, you know, it's for a tree company. And I, I think uh, my son Neil's friend has been up to almost uh, 2000 trees planted per day. Neil's quite not at, not at, quite at that level. You know, when they, when you, if you can plant that many trees, then go for it because you can make, you know, about 500 bucks in a day <laughs> planting trees if you're, if you're really, really good. But most people, you know, can't get to that level. So, you know, it's not bad for two months of work. And of course, you couldn't keep that up each day. And, you know, you might get calluses and, you know, the bugs are bad. And lately they've had uh, some decent storms with decent hail and, uh, also uh wildfires have been starting up some wildfires so it's like plant really fast get those trees in the ground so you know you got to plant more than the wildfires are going to take out right so what i'm doing is i'm going a week early and i'm planning to film a video each day on my trip and sort of document my trip and also write several several blogs so i'm going to focus on the environmental aspects. I mean, some of the things that I'll, I'm hoping to do are, you know, uh, see, document and see some of the clear cut forests in Northern Ontario, see some of the areas in Manitoba that have been flooded um, around the Winnipeg area, see the huge di water diversion project in Winnipeg, which is supposed to save the city from massive floods. And then as I drive on, to get to the Regina area. When I'm east of Regina, a couple hundred kilometers or so, I'm going to visit the um, residential school site in Saskatchewan that's been in the news in the last couple days because after the news broke of the 215 unmarked graves in British Columbia, other uh, First Nations bands have been working with universities and they got hold of ground. They got hold of ground penetrating radar three weeks ago in Saskatchewan to do with the some Polytech Institute in Saskatchewan, and they just discovered 751 unmarked graves in a residential school in this small town, which is just um, east of Regina. So I'm going to visit that site, and you know when I go to these sites, I'll do videos. I'll talk about the residential school system in Canada. You know, how the, basically the church and state Canadian government and the main churches um, committed all these atrocities at uh, residential schools and then hid, hid all the, uh, you know, the, the, the sordid history. And uh, also I'm hoping to, you know, if there's extreme weather events occurring as I'm on my trip, I will track into some storms. I've got all the radars and all the diagnostics so I can see where it hails and, you know, whether tornadoes are developing with using, uh, looking at the Doppler radars, which measure uh, wind direction as well. And when you get wind direction strong and close together in different directions and you can see rotation and pick out tornadoes. So I'm looking at that. If there are a lot of storms, I'll stay close to the uh, U.S. border, and uh, you know because that's where we're we're an area where there's quite a few 
storms developing. And of course, over the Great Plains, these storms you can see for, you know, 100 miles, you know, the thunderheads and, uh, you know, track them. So, so we'll see how that goes. You know, maybe I'll see a tornado yet. And uh, I'm also, if it's pretty quiet, if there's quiet storm activity, then I'll visit a number of different environmental sites. So in Northern Ontario, I'd like to see the, the Grassy Narrows area, because if you just Google Grassy Narrows Ontario, you'll come up with information on, on an enormous uh, mercury spill, you know, which contaminated the, the environment and it's still extremely contaminated. Um, and uh, I mentioned the flooding in Winnipeg, you know, getting to Calgary, I'll go to the area where the Saddle Dome is, you know, and the rivers meet, and there was massive flooding downtown a few years ago, and that was from a rain on snow event up in the mountains, which then tracked along the uh, river system, and basically Calgary had two days notice, but they completely were oblivious to it. You know, hey, the water's rising, how come? Well, there was massive rain and flooding, and the plug of water came down the river and finally reached you. I mean, you guys, any, any, any adult could, uh, could know that that water has to go somewhere, and it was coming right for Calgary. Um, if there's not a lot of storms, like I say, in the southern region, then uh, I'll jog north and uh, look, check out the, uh, you know, maybe get up to the Fort McMurray. And of course, Fort, Fort McMurray had these massive wildfires a few years ago, which destroyed large sections of the town. So I'll go there and talk about wildfires on my video that day and document, uh, you know, the look at some of the recovery efforts that have been done there. Um, and then go um, also, you know, look at some, go further north and out of town and try to get as close as I can to some of the tar sands or the Athabasca oil sands projects. And, you know, not sure if you can get very close, but you've probably all seen pictures of, of Canada's uh, Athabasca tar sands. And uh, I am bringing some instrumentation. I picked up a portable CO2 monitor recently, um, just uh, last week for this trip. And uh, it measures, uh, I got it at Best Buy actually. It's a neat device. It measures uh, CO2 fairly accurately. It measures uh, you know, temperature, humidity. It measures uh, some, poisonous gases, but it measures radon. You know, if there's uh, your radon comes out of rocks, it comes out of mines. Um, and I mentioned radon when I talked about, when I did a video a few months ago from Elliott Lake, where the, they mined the uranium town. And I'm also gonna revisit uh, Sudbury and the super stack on the way back and take the uh, north of Lake Superior route. And somebody recommended that I stop at one of the huge rock cuts along the road where you can see layer after layer after layer of sedimentary rock laid down and you can kind of get a history for the geology of the region. I didn't get to Timmins last trip. I'm hoping to get to Timmins to check out the uh, some gold mining activities there. Gold mining was their big thing. And uh, you know, so, so it's gonna be an interesting trip. Um, and uh, I was hoping to get a GPS tracker at Best Buy, but uh, they don't sell them anymore, or at least maybe they're online. I don't know, I'll try to get a hold of one. And I've also been trying to get a hold of a particle counter for PM 2.5. So it measures those tiny 2.5 micron or less particles that uh, are the most dangerous to humans because they can get very deep into our lungs and stay lodged in there for long periods of time, whereas the bigger particles can't. And when they get lodged in the lungs, they can eventually lead to uh, lung cancers. Okay, so um, you may have seen articles recently that talked about the combustion particles left over, particles left over from incomplete combustion that, uh, you know, get in the air, you know, there's rubber from car tires gets in the air. You know, there's lots of sources of particles over the land and uh, 
you know, air pollution kills about 8.7 million people per year. Think about that. You know, put the few million deaths for coronavirus into context. You know, four or five times as many deaths occur every year from air pollution. We just accept it as part of our industrial society. Um, yet there's lots of things that we can do to to improve, to, to reduce the, you know, to clean up the air. Okay, so there's all of these different factors. And uh, so make sure you're staying tuned to my YouTube channel, follow my YouTube channel, follow my blog, callbeckwith.net if you don't. And uh, please consider making a donation to my uh, blog called at paulbeckwith.net on PayPal. And I'd like to thank uh, Heidi, uh, a good friend in Ottawa, who's set up a GoFundMe page to to pay for uh, to help to help offset some of the expenses on on my trip. Um, you know, the car rental for two weeks, uh, gas, and uh, you know some lodgings. Although, you know, I was thinking I'm looking at tents at Mountain Equipment, but then I would have to get bear spray and all this other stuff. So. I'm not sure if that's a, a good idea. So, um, you know, be staying at some Airbnbs and some motels and stuff like that. And there is a, a guy I know from, I haven't met him, but on, on Twitter, um, Connor, who's also, he's just left. He's taken a trip out to the plains to, to storm chase. So one of the interesting things in it with the apps and the technology is you can actually storm chase with knowing nothing about storms. All you need to do is have this app and you have it set up so that you, there's a map with the radar showing storms and uh, these red dots. And these red dots indicate where other storm chasers are that are using the app and have logged on. And when you see, so you just follow these red dots around the screen on the map. And when you see the red dots starting to congregate, you know, you, you head to the densest uh, areas of highest number of red dots, and you're probably gonna see, you know, massive storms, perhaps tornadoes. I mean, that's all you need to do. So, you know, anybody can storm chase these days. And uh, yeah, so, so I'll, uh, you know, in the description of this video um, and the first comment, I'll provide the links to, uh, my website and also to the GoFundMe if you'd like to specifically make a donation towards my my trip. You know, most of you, I just got vaccinated. I just got the uh, second vaccination, second shot this morning. Um, and see, I was smart. I knew I might be doing videos and I would need my right arm. So I got it in my left arm. I'm right-handed, but I got the first, uh, the first shot I got was in my, I chose to have it in my right arm. So last, first one was right, second one's left. I had this hypotenuse, hy, hypotenuse, this hypothesis um, that uh, the symptoms might be less if you get the second shot in a different body location, you know, and it was in a public place, the vaccination clinic and, a, you know, and a, a, a pretty nurse and, uh, she, did, she thought I was joking when I said, uh, could you uh, do the, I'd like my shot in my uh, left cheek if that's possible. And she just kind of looked at me and said, well, I think it's a public place. It's probably not a good idea. And I guess they haven't done the tests on that, you know, putting it into bigger muscles and fat um, to see how effective it is. I also had a choice. The first virus, the first shot, vaccine shot I had was, was uh, Moderna. And uh, when I went, to the uh, agricultural, uh, the, the uh, agricultural palace at Lansdowne in Ottawa to get the second shot. It was uh, going to be Pfizer, and I said, "Do I have a choice? Are there? Do you have any Moderna?" And they did have some Moderna. They had a dozen or so shots. And I said, "Oh, well, give me a Moderna then, if that's possible. If that's okay, right?" And uh, so that's what I got. Um, I don't really like uh, mixing drinks, so you know, mink mixing my medication. I thought, you know, I'll just keep the, I'll just stay with the Moderna. I thought, I mean, the Moderna trials have been have been pretty good. So, 